Earlier in 2021, a sort of new company raised $150 million, all focused around kind of a new role called analytics engineering. That company, which was originally a consulting company, had developed a tool called DBT. Perhaps you've heard of it, and perhaps in the future I'll make a video about what exactly it is. But today I wanted to focus on what exactly is the difference between a data engineer, an analytics engineer, and a analyst. Because all of these roles have a lot of similarities in terms of tools as well as function, and so there's a lot of blurry lines between each of these jobs. Not to mention the fact that, you know, we have so many other similar titles like BI engineer, data engineer, which if you've ever uh, interviewed at Amazon, you'll know that they actually give you the same study guide for both their BI as well as their DE position. So clearly it looks like they don't even know the difference. And truthfully, I could keep going on with this kind of concept with roles like data architect, ETL developer, and all of these other concepts along the way that have kind of all morphed and traded jobs and traded different responsibilities over the years. And of course, the fact that the word engineer is even in the title of the role analytics engineer will probably make some people very upset because, you know, especially people that are like mechanical engineers, chemical engineers, electrical engineers who feel like they do pure engineering and are all upset because for some reason they make a lot less than some of these roles. Don't ask me why people that make our planes and rocket ships get paid less than people that, you know, make you click ads. But that's not the focus for this video. The focus for this video will be talking about the differences between analytics engineers, data engineers, and analysts. Because again, there's a lot of crossover, so let's kind of talk about this forward assembly line of data. If you look at DBT's kind of what is analytics engineering, I think they do a good job at least of summarizing the differences between these positions. Honestly, in one graphic. But in this video, we're gonna go a little more in depth as well as talk a little bit about salary. So hopefully we add a little more enrichment to this one picture. But essentially the role data engineers will play in a modern company with a sizable data team is that they will make the main kind of data pipelines, you know, especially a lot of the custom integrations, maybe create some more of the streaming components. So anything that has a lot of technical overhead, that's where data engineers will play their main responsibility, right? Like getting that data into the data warehouse, kind of creating maybe that first and second layer of data. For those of you unfamiliar, that first layer might be a little more raw and staging. And that second layer will be that like core data set. So before doing any form of fancy transformations, you're really just trying to show the main transaction data and dimensional data that basically represents a company's day-to-day -day transactions and information. This also fits kind of in that narrative I've talked about with the difference between software engineers and data engineers in the fact that data engineers kind of sometimes can either lean more towards the software engineering side or the analytical side. So this, I think, puts a better split in between the data engineer and analytics engineer, where the data engineer will start leaning even more heavily towards being more software focused, whereas the analytics engineer will be focused around creating data sets. And that kind of leads us into that responsibility of the analytics engineer, which their focus is about creating those core data sets. So they might be applying some of the more complex business logic, as well as applying like software best practices, like version control to ensure that, you know, as you're creating these different data sets, that if you're writing SQL, it's maintained over a long period of time, and you're not just changing it quickly, but you're doing things like writing unit tests and maybe doing some sort of CICD or something similar to make sure that whatever data comes out is accurate, especially once you start applying more complex business logic. That's kind of their role. They are creating these key data sets that analysts can then rely on without them then having to apply their own logic on top. The benefit here with not having analysts apply too much logic on top of the data, which is one of the major issues that can occur when you start having lots and lots of data and lots of complex business logic is you might have three or four teams applying the same business logic, which can lead to three or four different outcomes. So I think the goal here, at least envisioned by maybe DBT and other companies, is by having kind of one team that can manage this one layer of data, especially the more complex business logic, you're going to reduce the amount of issues in terms of syncing data, or maybe just having slightly different data, even though you're trying to apply the same logic. So the analytics engineer are going to apply a lot of, again, these best practices that we know from software engineering to analytics. They will also include things like data governance, as well as maybe hopefully tracking some things about KPIs and this complex business logic. So that way, as things change over time, all of that can be tracked more efficiently and just in a cleaner fashion. Looking at the analyst's responsibilities in this, again, forward assembly line of data, an analyst will do a lot of the ad hoc work. Their focus is going to be drilling into the data and really asking tons of questions and not having to be hindered by just creating clean data sets. 
that takes a ton of time. And so you can't necessarily go as deep as you want to in all of your analysis, but by having someone prior in that analytics engineering role, do a lot of this heavy lifting, Hopefully data analysts can then in turn focus a lot more on the business problems, as well as doing things like creating dashboards, which also require a lot of engineering best practices, which aren't always applied because there's not often a lot of time. So in turn, hopefully this split of responsibilities can make everyone's life a little easier, but that's just looking at responsibilities. Next, let's talk about tools. So when we look at the tools between these three different roles, there's definitely some crossover. All three of these roles probably use something like Python and SQL but more than likely they use them at different kind of weightings. You know, a data engineer is gonna be very focused on writing code and some SQL, where more than likely a analytics engineer is going to be very focused on writing SQL. And an analyst will probably use a combination of SQL, Tableau, Excel, and a couple other tools that maybe aren't as code heavy to develop their analytics and analysis. In this new framework, each of these different roles has the ability to better specialize in each of the tools that they're really focused on. You can allow the data engineers that like programming to focus more on that area, while you can allow the analytics engineers who maybe like SQL a little better to focus on that whole section. They can focus a lot more of their time on things like SQL versus having to spend a lot of times on like DevOps and Python and writing code, which gives them the ability to really focus in on, again, complex logic that can be very easy to get wrong. And on the flip side, analysts can focus on answering questions with whatever tools they like really in this case, because to me, an analyst job is really to do some form of analysis and generally answer a ton of questions that can then lead the business to better business decisions. There may or may not be the need to write code in that role. They might be able to answer a lot of their questions using things like Excel or maybe a quick Jupyter notebook. But the point of the matter is each of these different roles can focus on their core tools. On top of that, there's just so many solutions like Fivetran and Snowflake to focus on for both the data engineer and the analytics engineer that they're gonna be spending a ton of time just either learning new tools, migrating their tools to better and more efficient tools, and spending their time really making sure that those tools are utilized to the maximum capacity. You know, you're not just utilizing DBT to use it, but you're actually using it in such a way that makes your analytics more maintainable. So that's kind of the split of tools. Again, more than likely data engineers will be coding, analytics engineers will be writing SQL, and analysts will be answering questions using whatever tools that best suit them. Next, let's talk about salaries. Now, if you've seen my previous video about the five most in-demand data jobs for 2022 and their salaries, you probably already know a little bit about this answer. If you recall, data engineers make somewhere in the range of like 90 to 120K, Unless you're looking at a company like a Fang, where data engineers can easily make upwards of a quarter of a million dollars, even at a pretty low level, which can be two or three times higher than, again, some of these other companies. So data engineers do tend to command a pretty high salary. From what I've seen for analytics engineers, it's actually not that different than compared to data engineers. On average, they're making somewhere in the range of 80 to 110K. And there actually are, if you look at this chart, some that are making pretty near a quarter of a million dollars. I think this makes sense because a lot of the analytics engineer positions that I've seen are actually more of a combination of a data engineer plus an analytics engineer. We're often using a lot more tools to do the exact same work that a data engineer would do. And so in that regard, you're providing the exact same value and thus should be paid the same. And honestly, if you're also being expected to do analyst work, you might even think you should get paid more, but we'll see where that goes in the future. Again, you can kind of see this salary is pretty decent as well. And then finally for analysts, again, if you recall from my previous video, it's somewhere in the range of like 67 to like 80, 88K, which is a, again, a great salary. Again, if you go to a big tech company, this might be upwards of the range of 100K. In fact, I'm pretty sure some things match the base salaries of most of their tech or analytics employees. And the one differentiator then is stock, of course. That's always going to be the differentiator. I've talked about that before, even between like software and data engineers at a lot of tech companies. It's all about those stonks. The truth of the matter is that not a lot of companies can afford all three of these positions. Yes, it's nice in theory to have this Ford assembly line of data where everyone can specialize, but most companies are going to need you to play a role of each. You're likely, especially as a data engineer, going to be spending a lot of time, not just pulling in data and creating data pipelines with custom code, but also using tools like Fivetran and other solutions in order to pull in data into your data warehouse. And then depending on your analyst skill level, we'll likely spend a lot of time writing views as well as applying like business logic to create kind of core data sets that analysts can then use and parse through for their analysis. And now you're probably wondering which role is the one for you. 
I think the best way to answer this for yourself is to figure out what you like doing. For example, when I first started in data, I thought I really liked the idea of data science. But after spending about a year just trying and pushing in that area, I kind of found out I liked the idea of engineering better. I liked data, that was for sure, but I also enjoyed kind of building infrastructure and data pipelines and things of that nature and not doing as much analysis. It just wasn't as exciting for me. I really am not a huge fan of writing code in Jupyter Notebooks other than doing maybe some quick ad hoc stuff. And I really like writing code that's more infrastructure based and more longstanding. I also really like dealing with the things that are at that solution or system level where you're having to like coordinate things among different servers and maybe having to deal with like on-prem servers and the cloud and other components along that whole system. So I really like that picture and that side of data. And I'm not as big of a fan of just doing analytics and doing some sort of math and statistics. And that's something you need to be honest with yourself about. Do you prefer doing things like programming in SQL or are you more SQL heavy? And where do you kind of fit on the data spectrum? Are you more on the data engineering side or the analyst side? It's really a broad spectrum. And even amongst the spectrum, you can kind of fit as a mishmash in between. So the question is what problems do you like solving and what tools do you like using? Please do take a moment to comment and answer that question below. And I just wanna say thank you so much for watching. I hope this helped answer the question. What's the difference between a analytics engineer, a data engineer, and a analyst? With that guys, I will see you next time and goodbye.